Yeah, and that is the last fire card. So, yeah, there are six elements, then there are, uh, sorry, eight elements, and then there's going to be some hybrids for people who are new to this. Uh, but we're moving on to ice. Something I want to say, I feel bad for this card. I love the art. I, I wanted the old Yasale to have this art. But, yeah, so we got three cost forward, 7k Yasale. Uh, you may dull it, put your sail from the field into the break zone, play one ice forward of cost five or less from your hand onto the field. So it's exactly the same as what's a Enek Nash from the last one? Which SN one was Carl. it? SN Carl. SN Carl. Yeah. I consider okay. this better than SN Carl. Yeah, it's, simply it's... because you can do it during your opponent's turn. Yeah, and it's uh, ch one cheaper, isn't it? Or are they same cost? Yeah, it's one cheaper, it's, one it's K less. One... It's one cost cheaper, it's 1k less. The fact that you just have to sacrifice it so you can't repeat the effect is sort of eh. Yeah, the downside and is this says ice forward. Play... Yes, it only plays an ice forward. It's it's specifically designed to combo with another card that's in this set. We'll get to that one later. But I do, I, again, I do really like that this can be done during your opponent's turn. So you can sort of just flash in something really powerful and or anything, or it's something really simple, like, you can play the Opus 1 Sephiroth if you're empty-handed, and make them empty-handed. Yeah, I also do like the fact that the the older one is, uh, the other one bounces to your hand where this one dies. So, I do think that there is enough negatives on this that I do like the four-cost one better. At the same time, I don't, I don't even know if they're quote-unquote negatives, because... I, what, I'll, what I'd really like to do with this card is like you play it and then somebody tries to kill it and then you just respond with Bolias or some way to give it haste crack it and then turn it, so, turning it into something better yeah but then you're paying 5 to play a 5 cost or less wouldn't it just be better to play a 5 cost well people play Tama to play things at instant speed so yeah Oh, do it during their turn. Yeah, okay, no, no, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. To surprise them. Yeah, no, no, you, that's a good ambush. Said, yeah, you flash something in. Yeah. That if the if, if, uh, haste comes in the form of Belias, you might even sneakily um, take something out with it. Okay, yeah. no, I, I get what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's actually good, because if you're doing it during their turn, yeah. they're, yeah, because especially if they don't expect you to have the um, Belias in hand. Yeah. It's, it's a very, it's a very sort of like galaxy brain sort of play like what again why wouldn't you just play the five co the five cost giant dude first but it's i i, I don't know, know. I feel like but, having fun well the belize thing means <laughs> you're in two colors which means the effect might i don't know i don't know i still don't like the I restriction everyone, on this i think everyone's missing the big picture on this like okay so you go to so you go to your end step all right cool what stack this drop drop vein yeah, you can yeah. do that too. Like, let's drop Bane. Pay a bunch or your board dies. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, it's, 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 a, yeah, it's one of those effects. The only thing that's really different about this is it's harder, it's a lot easier to get rid of it. So you can sort of stop the effect, like, stop the sudden effect from happening. Yeah. But that's still the same as the old one, so that's not really a weakness, it's just the nature of the card. Yeah. That's... But yeah, the, the fact that you can do it during during your opponent's turn is that that's that's what we call in the business chat's kiss. Also chat, let me know if there's any buffering or any issues with the stream. I'm seeing a couple of stuff on my uh, just internet in my area has been shit last few days. I've actually not been able to stream properly and it's been a bit of a problem. But please let me know if it's getting too bad or uh, what you're seeing. Just give me the information. That way I know what to do from my end. All right. Velothor. Two cost. If you control three or more ice backups, Velothor, which is a monster, also becomes a forward of power 7k. When Velothor is put from the field into the break zone, choose your opponent. Uh, choose um, Your opponent discards one card from their hand. So this was part of that monster cycle talking about before. Uh... Yeah, this Slightly one's... Slightly better than Mumbong, but not by much. Yeah, I was going to say, this is probably the second last like, one, I would yeah. say. 
yeah, those two are neck and neck for being worst. Like, it's it's, it's such a simple effect. Like, oh, it dies. Your opponent discards a card, but I would s- got so many better ways to make your opponent discard cards. I it's would just, put this yeah. up. I would put this above uh, Mom Bomb just because a it doesn't hurt you when it dies. B there is actually things you can interact with them discarding a card that you know that five k doesn't really do much for in the other one. And it's a two cost. Yes, the other one was three, yeah, wasn't like, it? No, uh, yeah, they're, they're both all, two costs. Oh, they're both two costs. Oh, they're all two they're costs. They're both two yeah. costs. But again, I I only put this slightly above Bomb Bomb just because there's like I have so many better ways to make your opponent discard cards. Yeah, and two of them are banned, so <laughs> Yeah, they definitely up the security on discard effects since Thaumaturge and Gespa. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, yeah, there's some that are just kind of good but yeah this guy he's fair yeah Camelot uh, forward 8k when Camelot enters the field or attacks choose one dull forward opponent controls deal at 2k damage for each, each ice backup you control uh, special to ice choose one forward deal at 2k damage for each ice character you control uh, I uh, I like this I can see this being used very well in uh, mono ice uh, dull and freeze but I also feel that there's better ice cards that do similar stuff than this, right? This is... Like, this is a very powerful mono ice card. The biggest problem with the mono ice is that it's the one of the worst mono elements. Yeah. So, it's sort of, it's sort of like, do you put this really, really good effect into this really, really, really bad deck? Well, it's not just this you really know? bad deck. It's the fact that this depends on mono, where mono ice just has a lot of trouble right now yeah i'm feeling more and more i'm feeling more and more mono ice is becoming the new mono fire which for a while it was mono lightning that was the mono new mono fire but yes mono ice like the biggest thing that ice does is disruption right it disrupts resources and disrupts your opponent's board this doesn't really do either of those things like it's a very powerful effect because what ice lacks for a long time is ways to get rid of cards after they've disrupted them but i just i don't know i don't know if it's worth it plus the forward already has to be dull which is uh, which either means you've already done something to dull it that turn or you've taken finished. damage yeah. i okay i'm gonna be real with you i personally kind of like this Oh, I love the card. Like I said, it's not the card that I'm annoyed at. I just don't know if it has a home. I love the card. It's, again, straight removal. The S doesn't have to target Dull Forwards, which is a positive. You have a, um in-color way to search this, and it's not like the name clash is anything good because Dark Camelot is not good anymore, which is a shame. So, yeah. <laughs> I kind of like it. I'll, if Mono Ice becomes good, expect a couple of these. No, That's definitely. If. Yeah. As I said, you, you would definitely see it if Mono Ice becomes a thing. But is there enough the, now to make Mono Ice a thing? Given that the last set they had to absolutely break Mono Ice to try and make it worth playing, and no one played it. Yeah, like Mono Ice right now is Mono. There's no Mono Ice. It's Ice Earth or Plus or Ice Lightning, which we'll get into later. Yeah. Plus with um, plus with Pasalis as well. Like. Why would you play this Camelot when you got Vasalis, which just does things better? Oh no, like Mal- the special Malbert Key. The, special the card is good. It just the home for it is shit. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 what was that's that's generally yeah, that's the idea. Camelot is standing there with a great sword, charging forward as a bunch of kittens are running behind him. Yeah, yeah look, look look at how powerful my army is. Oh wait, what that's army? That's it's a bunch of kittens, and then Faisalus is back there being a neutron bomb. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's like, are you ready to go in there? Is my Earth brother here? No, I am not ready. Just thanos in wind. the background. All my lightning, all my, all my wind. wind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it, I don't know. if Yeah, the fact that this depends on the ice backups and ice characters is a little unfortunate. But... Oh, talking of good cards. Gilgamesh FFBE. Three cost forward 7k. 
If you have three or more different elements among cards in your break zone, Gilgamesh FFBE gets plus 1k power, haste, first strike. And if you have seven or more, so that seven or more refers to the uh, colors. If you have seven or more different elements in your break zone, Gilgamesh FFBE excuse me, also gains Brave, and Gilgamesh FFBE can attack three times in the same turn. Sec another different line, when Gilgamesh FFBE attacks, choose one character. If you have five or more different elements among cards in your break zone, dull it and freeze it. So, yeah, we literally went from a good card that depends on mono to a card that goes, you know what, Ice is not a mono color anymore, let's make something for that. At the same time, it's also a card which says, like, you don't want me to run mono elements? Well, fine, now I have to run all of them. Screw you. Yeah. I still think with the three elements with this, it's good enough. I'll be honest, I think just with the three elements alone, it's good enough. If you can get to the five, that'd be amazing. If you get to the seven, that's really good. Yeah, and I'll be completely honest, I would want to be at the five as a minimum. Yeah, it's like, if you're not at five, this thing's just not good. But I... why, why would you pay three CP for an 8k with hasting first strike when you've got white tiger let's see nimbus yeah yeah or it's like white tiger let's see like you stole also has haste and that doesn't see any play sure it's not nice but the point still stands but right. this card is the big funny is what it is oh it's an entertaining card if you can get it to work but yeah I mean... <laughs> the problem is getting it to work in the first place I've made everything work. I'll do this too. Well, the, the way I th the way I thought about it is, if you could get like uh, forwards in one light or dark, and then use the summons from the opposite, can get you two fairly safely. The way that people are looking at potentially making this get itself up to seven is by using the emperor. That way, you can sort of like the I think it's the opus. Was it Opus 12 Emperor? The 2 cost 5k, where if it dies, you can search for an Emperor to put into your break zone to return it to play? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what they're doing. So then they're searching for the Dark Emperor, putting that in the break zone, returning that, the, returning the Emperor to play. I... And there's your Dark card in your break zone without having to quote-unquote have it die. Yes. Yeah. To, to be and honest, then, yeah. with Emperor, it also handles Lightning if you absolutely wanted to, because you have the Opus 6 Emperor. But, yeah, you can also just run hybrid ice lightning stuff if you really wanted to. Well, I was I was playing around the idea of a three element with, uh, obviously, one for me, guys, for this. And something that, you know, like the old... Which one was it that uh, discard two cards, break a forward opponent controls? Yeah. Uh, okay. Use Don... Yeah. So oh, yeah. Uh, Turbo mill yourself with Don Corneo. Yeah, stuff like that, where you don't need to run the extra colors, you just grab them and dis you have a small set of them to feed this, and you discard them slash discard them for mana or for something on the field that requires you to discard. Hell, I even made the joke of running like a good mix of colors and the um, cloud, the five cost cloud, it dies, mill 10, was it 10 or 20? It's 10, isn't it? That's it. That's oh, exile, it's exile. No, I just remembered. Yeah, damn, that doesn't work. But yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah there, there's... Like, don't get me wrong, there's ways to make this work, and when it works, it is insanely powerful. Swinging three times, going freezing three things, and with first strike, is very hard to get rid of. Oh, the Mist Dragon. is getting yeah. up to seven. Yeah, Mist Dragon and stops then, this completely true. And yeah, if you get Mist Dragon, that's game over. <laughs> if you get Mist Dragon, just scoop them up then and there. Yeah. Yeah, but this card is the epitome of it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Yeah, so so I love we just got through two ice cards, one that's like you have to play mono, which is terrible, or you have to play all the colors, which is terrible. And this is kind of why ice is also struggling, because of this kind of stuff, because this is the legendary, and the last one, oh, One of them. Why did that take me here? Yeah, one of them. Yeah. That's a heroic. So the heroic and legend slot in this game a two joke cards practice or one that's just sort of doesn't work just because of the nature of the game and this one is just more of a joke and that's why ice is suffering because you're doing stuff like this in their most powerful slots yep all right we got a two cost yeah. uh two cost bard backup 
ice and dull it, put Bard into the break zone, choose one forward, dull and freeze it. Uh, it's just more of what ice is doing already. Yeah. We don't need to talk about it. And it's isn't, about as simple as you can get. And isn't there already a backup that's just sacrifice it to do this in ice? I mean, there's plenty that just stack to like dull a thing, freeze a thing, freeze two things, like. If if this if it's worth anything in particular, this is a direct power creep from the Opus One Bard, which just says, uh, oh, it... tap tap sack uh, ice tap sack choose one forward dull it. Yeah, yeah. This freezes the forward too, so yeah, power creep. Why are they right. power creeping all of our FFT backups with FFEX? Is this supposed to mean something? Apparently, we uh, explorers more. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Uh, either one game sold more or less than the other. It's it's down to that math. But which one's which? <laughs> the world may never. We'll, we'll let you discover that. <laughs> Kuja five cost forward nine k. When Kuja is chosen by opponent's summons or abilities, choose up to one forward opponent controls dull it. So uh, this is a card that makes me really really sad. Because that artwork is downright gorgeous. Yeah. But yeah. again, well, they waste it on they waste it on such a bad series of text. Okay. So you know how I said for um some cards here, Opus One called, they want the garbage cards back. Kuja chapters called. It wants its garbage cards back. <laughs> yeah, it's like hmm. Like Great there's, there's there's And here's there's, the he, he, here's the uh, worst here's the worst thing. If we weren't in uh, coming out of a meta where global effects were the main pain in the ass, not targeting, that this is just a slap in the face because it's like, oh, we need stuff that protects from global effects because global effects are now dominating. Oh, we'll just keep doing something that affects target. It's like, but that's not what we're doing anymore. Like, and it doesn't even freeze it. Yeah, yeah it, it just, just dulls, dulls it. it. Like, in all honesty, this should have been a 2 cost 12k with all three keyword skills and, <laughs> and like, some sort of protection. Like, hell, the only thing in the meta, from last meta, that this works on is, uh, is Ursula, and it doesn't even stop the Ursula! <laughs> yep. It just, <laughs> it just annoys the monks, it doesn't, it's like, cool, I'm now the thing that's gonna counter your thing by not countering it, I'm just waving, I'm thinking, you know, shooting fireworks at you as you're, like, killing my field. Yeah, it's like... You've got a bunch of, like, great swords, and I'm here with a pool noodle. Come yeah. <sighs> yeah. At least it's a common. At least that was the yeah. common slot, so... Can't be too mad. Uh, Kefka, three-cost backup, EX. When Kefka enters the field, choose one forward opponent controls, dull it. Uh, dull, ch dull uh, Kefka, choose one forward, dull it and freeze it. You can only use this ability if you control five or more ice backups. It's literally the other backup, but requires mono. Although, at the same time, this is repeatable. Yes, but I also feel like Square Enix is now using ice to fuck with me. Okay. There are two things this card has going for it. It's Cat 6, so if you really want to play Mono Ice Lock in 2021, you can. And two, yeah, it's repeatable. Why is it a 3 cost? Just because Ice can't get too many good cards. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, Ice needs good cards. Okay, here's Kuja, here's this. And again, art, art that's, like, semi-wasted on a yeah, pretty it's... mediocre card. Uh, again, Malmode Kick, the card's good, but depends on a... Okay, if someone can break Mono Ice, if someone can break Mono Ice, yes, this is amazing. It should have been a two cost, in my opinion, because this should be able to be played on turn one. But you can fully lock the... Yeah, I know, but still, it's too dependent on... It's five... You need five uh, backups, yeah. Ice. It's specifically five ice backups. Yeah, yeah. five yeah, more it's... ice backups. And... So you're only running this card in mono ice, and you're yeah. only getting the benefits if you're running mono ice, which, as we've established with Tamlinort, it's got... Oh, right. uh, Tamlinort is an amazing card. It just... The element isn't. And, again, this this has a very powerful effect, and that dull effect, it's... The element itself is the problem, which is ice. Yeah. And, again, like... all it's doing is disrupting. It's not getting rid of stuff. Yeah. That being said, like this and, and the Camelot are cards to look at at the, whenever a new set comes out to see what they've done with Ice. 
Like, I'd always keep an eye on that, and this is stuff you should sort of keep in your sphere of memory. And, yeah, it's it's a good card. But, like, hell, even if it was three or more ice backups, or even four or more ice backups, I could possibly have made it feasible, but... Five, you need all five. Yeah, yeah three or three. more, because, like, the problem is ice doesn't have enough time to play backups. Not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Especially now that the meta's just gone. Oh, you're playing backups? Cool. Here's everything ever. Die. Yeah, because right now, Ice is just, I paralyze your backups by playing forwards and just keep you locked down as I'm swinging with the forwards that I'm just rushing out. Yeah, and plus, re remember how in the last video I talked about how Sophie is the most busted, bonkers, and broken thing on the planet? Turns out I was right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and that deck is everywhere. People haven't agreed on, you know, yeah, what the like best that. build of that deck is. Yeah, there's like 10 builds of Sophie, and I still don't think people have really solved it. Yeah, uh -huh. because, well, I think it's, I think it's meta dependent. Are, it's not just that, it's because all 10 builds are viable, relevant, and powerful. Yeah. Uh, Armand did the same with no backups, and it's now bad. Oh, yeah, yeah compared oh, yeah. to the Kuja. The, the okay. Kefka, yeah. Amon, the king. But here's the thing that I think, uh, and this is the thing that I like. I agree that Se uh, Sophie was a really good card. I think the reason why we haven't locked it down is because this game sort of is a shifting meta, even at its best. And I think that's a good thing for the game. I think the fact that no one deck can ever be eternally powerful in one uh, cycle of meta, I think that's a benefit to this game. Like, I don't want the era of mono-black uh, devotion 90% of the meta and standard ever to happen in this game. So, I don't think that's a detriment on the card. I think it's a positive on the game. Right, uh, two costs. The Emperor, 5k forward. When the Emperor enters the field due to an ability, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a character, add it to your hand. Remove 15 ice cards from the break zone from the game. Play Emperor onto the field. You can only use this ability during your main phase. And if the Emperor is in your break zone. Uh, Mono Ice, again. They're trying to make it a thing, but... If there was, if I was going to run Mono Ice, I would run the starter backup Emperor, for starters. Yeah. Plus 15 ice cards. 15. Also... If you're... If the game has proceeded that far that you have 15 cards plus this in your break zone why haven't you won yet or why haven't you lost yet why well, you haven't won or lost yet you yeah. activated don cornea to take control of a forward effect exactly once yeah but also like... at best this is a zero cost 5k which kind of feels weak to me Like, let, let's compare it to another zero-cost 5k for 30 seconds. Uh, Sarah Mobius. Yep. Mm. Oh, wait. There is no comparison. Yeah. The, the, the worst part is, like, Sarah Mobius is a common, and this is a rare. Yeah. And even like, when you decide that, and when you decide to make Sarah Mobius a two cost, she's still doing something. Whereas with Emperor, he's like, "Hey, look at me! I'm a five k. I have cool art." Yeah, it needed something else. Yeah. It needed something else with this. I feel that it, yeah, especially when you have backups in this game and forwards that when they enter, look at the top card if it's Ice, put it into your hand. Like I think Ice has one of the most of those kind of cards. Yeah. So. Having said though. I still feel like 15 was the right number. 10 would have been way too strong. Yeah. Uh, if, if, no, no. The ability itself is fine. I just don't think the, the thing you're getting for it is the... The, the, pay, the payoff is way too much. Like, way too small for way too high a cost. And it's main phase... It's a main phase effect as well. Like, it's not even it's instant main phase speed. Only. Yeah, it's not even like, instant if you, speed. If you, could, if you could do this at instant speed the 15 cards will be justifiable because yes. then you could flash in the blocker. Yeah. Or flash game, or flash in flash in an extra attacker to possibly win the next turn. Yeah. As it stands, it's too little, too late. Yeah. Mm. Or too or too early. Or too early. 
Uh, this is part of the uh, monster cycle. One cost goblin. At the end of your turn, place a counter on it. Uh, you may sacrifice it. Dull one. F uh, choose one dull forward. Deal it 2k damage for each counter on it. So exactly the same as Kobo uh, Yang. Just does damage it to a dull forward instead of any. Like, the only thing that this card really has going for it is that it's a goblin. So you could search for it with Verena, but we already had that. Yeah. Exactly. Let's let's so, let's let's move on. Move on. Okay. I I actually really liked this card when I first read it. Two cost chivalry EX summon. Choose one forward until end of turn it gets plus three K power, and when a forward opponent controls is put from the field into the break zone on the same turn, the chosen forward that dealt it uh damn it. Uh oh god, this is so complicated. For, into the break zone on the same turn the chosen forward has dealt it damage. Your opponent discards one card from their hand. So you pump something, and if that thing kills something, they discard a card. That's hey, Barrelai, how you doing? Yeah, Barrelai, Laswell, Philia, Cyan. The amount of just board wipes you have that now say your opponent discards their hand. Hmm. Taste. Yeah, yeah but, but I... the reason why I bring up Barrelai specifically is because not only does he sweep the board. He then discards your hand, and as a result of you discarding your hand, he double freezes all your backups. You yes, are literally yep. doing zero things for two turns. Yep. And also, on top of that, it pumps the barrel eye, so it protects it from removal somewhat. And EX yeah. Burst! I want that noted! And EX Burst! Yeah, and it's burst for some reason. Yeah, so I actually I, I'll love honest, this. This is probably the card, yeah. I'll, I'll be completely honest with you, this is probably the least necessary EX Burst ever because other than being like a combat trick and don't get me wrong carbuncle was amazing as a combat trick but it didn't have the x burst itself this as an as an ex burst it's like that seems like that's just filler like sure you get to do something if you burst it but well here's the thing it, it could, it? It, well it could turn a field that you're unable to block with into a field you can block with like, that's fairly significant. If, they sw if they've if they got a couple of good swings in that you're just going to have to take and you have forwards where you don't want to lose them, and then EX burst this and go, well, guess what? I now can block with this thing, and even if you kill it by attacking with two things, I've made you discard two cards. It turns... Also, it, yeah, it's a situation turner in mid-combat. Also, you could be really entertaining with this if you want it to be really, really funny, and target their failure and they discard the cards <laughs> yeah that's uh, if their forwards die though yeah Especially if they have a hand because philly is an acorn yeah sure they're discarding two cards and playing failure which is going to drop them of a couple of cards already but if they happen to kill a couple of their own forwards yeah you know yeah, your Philly can have three more cards. Yeah, your Philly can have three K for a turn in exchange for your hand. Yeah. Yeah, but this card. Uh, it's it's, quite it's kind of entertaining to think about it that way, but yeah. It's, no, it's, it's a very versatile card. You are not wrong. It's a, I really love this card, and I'm yeah. kind of glad it's a chivalry. Yeah, as as a combat trick, it's very neat. Hmm. Uh, four cost Sarah f uh, forward, 8k. When Sarah is put from the field into the break zone, select one of the two following actions. Your opponent discards one card from their hand, or freeze all forwards opponent controls. Isn't this just a complicated Renoa from set one? Oh, no, wait. It's not It's not dull. It's freeze. Oh, wow. No, it's worse. It's just, it's just freezing, and as a death trigger, why? Next. Yeah, like, it was worse than I thought it was. I'm like, I thought it was bad as it was. Oh, here we are. His Royal Highness. Four cost, Good King Moogle Mog 12. Uh, primal, forward, 7k. When Good King Mog Moogle is put from the field into the break zone, you may discard two cards. If you do so, return Good King Mo uh, Moogle to your hand. So this is one of the cards I was talking about, like, with the um, Gilgamesh. Like, I just discard two off-color cards to bring this back. And then I try and up the color in my bin. At the end of each of your turns, reveal the top three card of your deck. Play up to one card named Moogle, uh, Moogle XIV or Job Moogle of cost three or less among them onto the field and return the other cards to the bottom of your deck in any order. I love okay, this thing. So let's have a let's have a 
reasonable discussion about Good King Muggle Mug the Twelfth. Um, this card is very, very nice. It's got some very reasonable effects, and at any time that something says, oh, at the end of your turn, when you can't respond to this, by the way, you get to do a thing, and it could eventually, like, gain you resources, it's something worth paying attention to. Plus, Definitely. If it dies, if it dies, you can just pay two cards to get it back in your hand. Again, another effect to seriously pay attention to. My biggest gripe with this card is every single Moogle that you will want to play is a backup. If you yep. get to five backups, this card does nothing. Uh, just for my own thing, because I'm obviously the most familiar with the cards, even though I should be. But um, how many of how many Moogle backups can be sacrificed? Thirty. Um, not that many. Yeah, really, yeah. not that many. Uh, you've got uh, the Theatrhythm Moogle from Opus Four, uh, Moogle Brothers, uh, Mog Mobius, and that's yeah. if you're not using the Searcher Mog Mobius. Moogle Bros, yeah. But still, I, I still feel like this is an early game free backups, possibly, and that's still fairly significant, even if late game it's uh, diminishing returns. I feel the bonus you get early can be very significant, though. Like, getting two, one to two free backups just at the end of it, your turn, that's still significant, in my opinion. Oh, I'm not saying that it's not. Like this, this card is the old, like one of the best turn one plays. It's again, it's similar to Tenzin in the fact that you're generating free resources because you can, and it's also got a similar trigger of, um, like of leaving the field or death trigger where yeah. if you kill it, you can just get it back. So you got to deal with it all over again. Also, so again, if you my... if you've got your backup set up early by this, you're discarding backups to bring this thing back. Yeah, so early game it's generating your resources, late game it's just a really hard to deal with threat. Yeah. Which... And, you know, from my own personal experience, having played the Moogle deck, like Ice Wind, because for reasons we'll get into later, it works really well in Ice Wind. But, you know, you can play stuff like Mog 13 2, Stilt Skin, and Mog FFBE to be able to search on your opponent's end step when they can't really respond to it. Not on your end step, rather. Also, and I know it's not the I know it's not the best Moogle unless you're on damage three, but the damage three Moogle for wind that draws you a card on draws you a card is can be pretty nasty at end turn. Yeah. Oh yeah, Crystal Hunt Moogle with this is also really good. Yeah. Can confirm. So I, I, I like this card. I think it's gonna be fun. And we got a lot of uh I don't know if it'll work with the Chocobo Moogle synergy, but it's still pretty good. Uh, Proto Fel C Adam. If you uh, three cost forward seven k. If your opponent has two cards or less in their hand, it gets plus two power and first strike. Uh, when he enters the field, put two manipulation counters on it. You may remove a manipulation counter from this. If you do so, cancel the effect of whatever's targeting it. Okay, so a couple of things to clear up on this card. <clears throat> The, the placing of the manipulation counters can be cancelled by Amaterasu, which just kills the forward. And can be responded to on ETB. And this is a must trigger. So if something targets it, you must remove one counter. Yeah, including your own stuff. It includes your own things. You cannot Belias this to give it haste because it will just cancel the Belias if it's still got counters on it. And EX Burst still gets around this effect. Yep. That is correct. Basically, what what they decided to do is they decided to give Illua to ice, but made it worse just because it's ice. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I... As much as I do agree with the guests but that the Thaumaturge scare, I feel that they've... It's put them in a... Like, when something scares them more than Chapters Fire does for the R&D group, that's not a small thing, but damn, I wish... Uh, they would still do more for ice. I, I want a balance of the elements. Like, I... It's not like I'm just going straight for the underdog. I'm glad red got what it needed. I'm glad lightning got what it needed. I just... 
This game has done so well of balancing five out of the six elements, I wish it could just do the job of balancing the sixth as well. Uh, four cost devout backup. When devout, so this is part of the cycle. You reveal two cards, put an ice into your hand, the other in the bin. Sacrifice it, reveal two cards, put one ice in your hand, put the other in the bin. Uh, again, zero cost backup. Is there anything more to add to this cycle? Just that this is probably the worst one because it's ice. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Not much else to say. Yeah. Time Mage. Uh, I did like this one and the wind version of it, I'll be honest. Four cost forward, 8k. When, act when active time mage becomes dull, choose one forward, dull it. That also counts for attacking. Hey, look, it's that anti-ice cards tech that yep. we always needed. Yeah, clearly. <sighs> but why? This is just another... This is just a black belt. No, it's, it's, it's so you can now run uh, the, the swamp monster. I forgot what the other part of his name... Cloud, uh, pun? Swamp Monk. Yeah, Swamp Monk, uh, Snow, and this, and you're just basically not allowed to let your opponents not have an untapped thing when you attack. But you could just play backup Snow and not have to worry about playing three kind of meh cards. Exactly. I, I know, I was being sarcastic, hoping one of you guys yeah. would say that. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Um, yeah. <laughs> at the very yeah. least. Though, I. That makes this really, like, the thing that would make this good is if there was an effect which said tap the like dull one active ice card do a thing. Like if ice had an effect like that, I would rate this slightly better. But as it stands, no. I do want to note something that won't re doesn't really matter right now again because of ice, but is something to look at. This and Swamp Monk with the backup sn uh, snow does stack. So if you've got the backup snow and this attacks, or Swamp Monk attacks, you do dull two things. And that can be important depending on the deck and the factors, but I still feel that that kind of deck is a mono ice deck, which we've gone over the problem with that. Even though I do feel we've gotten some better monster support in this set. Oh, the one we've been talking about, this art. My god, the art from the FF remake has been interesting in my opinion four cost backup don corneo when don corneo enters the field your opponent reveals three cards from their hand select one among them your opponent discards that card i kind of like this card oh no thoughts um, thought sees is always good and thought sees in a color that hasn't had it or even if it's pseudo thought sees in this case is decent i really like this like, if they've got four or more cards in hand, they're always protecting their best card. But, I don't know. As a turn one backup, I don't mind this. Yeah. Sure, you're picking the best of a bad bunch, but you're still getting rid of a card out of their hand. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I did... I that's another case of destruction. Like, it's, yeah. it's fine. It does its thing. And un and unlike uh, Kate Sith, this doesn't let your opponent redraw and replace that card. Even though I do like that Kate Sith is Exile, this at least doesn't let them recover. Yeah. And also, the name clash isn't really a thing, because the other Don Cornio is kind of yeah. bad. So, yeah, and run I do a like completely it. different deck. Yeah, yeah, that too. But also, so, yeah, so the Don is good. No, nah, no, nah, the Don is good. Shiva, Lady of Frost... You cannot play Shiva, Lady of Frost, or card named Yasale while already in control of either character. When Shiva, Lady of the Frost enters the field, choose one character opponent controls. Dull it, freeze all forwards opponent control, put three backups in the break zone, remove... Uh, sorry. Uh, dull, freeze all forwards opponent control, full stop. Put three backups into the break zone, remove Shiva, Lady of Frost from the game, then play Shiva, Lady of Frost onto the field. I, I actually like this. I actually really okay, like this so... card. This is actually our other ice legend for this set, um, yeah. and this is this by the story hashtag spoilers is what Isaili turns into, hence why the five cost ice card. And as we all know, uh, only Woff is allowed to cheat this mechanic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, as far as the effects go, um, selling a thing then freezing all their forwards is a very is a nice trick. 
it's especially nice to do that during your opponent's turn because then you can just sort of you, you, you basically get one dull freeze and if they've already got a bunch of their forwards frozen you lock them down too the reason why I say that is because that active ability to put three backups into the break zone you can do that at any time oh and the fact that this card returns active not dull it can surprise a blocker as well so you're generally dealing with more than one thing when you play this card my it's... my big issue is three backups for ice unless it's got something else working with it can be a lot i agree but as a sort of later in the game uh snap like like snap effect i would break this also, if you've got Garland in play... You I was going to say, guys. yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you need to... Really yeah, you need to oh, sort I... of hybrid... Uh, you need to... You, this, is, this is very much needing to play in a multicolor, either with Wind, where you get a lot of backups out and you don't care about sacking him as much because you've got new excess value, or something so that feeds off the sacking. So here's a fun thing you can do, right? Play this with Goomba. Yeah, so you get one of the backups back. Yeah. yeah. Keep going. Or um, if you look at the old lightning cards that whenever they break do something as well, it was pretty cool. I think, what's what's that really old lightning card that when it breaks you get to put something from your bin into hand, I think it was? Oh yeah. Yeah, stuff like that can be fun. And again, yeah. the fact that, as you said, it's instant speed also means if they try and kill this thing, you can do it in response. And the new ins it comes in as a new instance, meaning their removal spell doesn't hit it. It's not just that as well. It comes in active, so it's suddenly a 9k blocker again. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's if you're, what I think is actually huge about this card. It's, if you, if you're willing like, to lose... That active ability is the reason why it's a legend, I think, to be honest. If you're willing to lose the three backups, this thing could potentially block four things or three things and survive. Yeah. But again, like... Although it's good that this doesn't specify ice in any fashion, the fact that it's an ice card that it, it's still kind of hard to find a home for it because ice as a ice as an element needs the support um if you're running ice uh you've already got all of these really powerful effects so do you need the shiva if you're running ice wind you're already running like the ice wind list is so tightly packed right now that it's so hard to add cards to that deck tightly packed deck that also doesn't want to sacrifice its backups as well i exactly. think i think this is i think this is a card for ice fire to be honest ice or, ice lightning, or ice lightning or ice lightning very nice ice yeah fire with garland or ice lightning to take advantage of a hell of a lot of freeze yeah sure. and a hell and a hell of a lot of uh hastes and sneaky dolls yeah yeah but still i i i'm glad that we got one good legendary out of ice yeah. All right. Uh, I'm just going to read this because I need to go check on something, but it's going to be quick. But two cost Moogle XIV. So 14. Yeah. Back up. When ice Moogle, uh, when an ice primal enters the field, activate Moogle XIV. Uh, dull it. Choose one dull, uh, one forward. Dull it. You can only use this if you have a job ice primal. I think we're going to skip over this because we've gone through this cycle, haven't we? Uh, yeah. I, again, you're playing. If you've got Good King Mogamog out, you've already done what this Moogle wants to do. And if you're playing this with Shiva, then I guess you get to dull another thing, but I, yeah. And if you've got this with Shiva, you're probably sacrificing it, so it doesn't really... You're, you're sacrificing it soon enough, but you're probably doing the dull effects of the freeze, freeze all forwards effect on the stack, so... Actually, no, that actually works with Shiva, because Shiva's not uh, yeah. Sacrifice 3 active. Yeah, it's just Sacrifice 3. It's yeah. Sac 3 backups, yeah. yeah so you so... Can sort of do stuff with that. But at the same time, it's kind of... Like, a, a part of the... Part of me says, if you're going to use Shiva's Flicker effect, you don't sack the Moogles, because then you get two active backups again. Yeah. So you get you to go another this? thing, but, you know... Yeah. You know, one thing I hate most about this card... Go on. It's 
neither a job Moogle, nor is it a card name Moogle. So, oh. anything that cares about that, it hurts. But you're still going to run this in any deck that runs Moggle Mog, because, you know, you need all the targets you can get. Yeah. And Moggle Mog specifically says this card. Yeah, it specifically says card name Moogle 14. So if we ever get a better card name Moogle 14, keep an eye on one. Yeah. Uh, Luage. Two cost backup, I have to say. Is this the first job type doctor we've gotten? No. It's no, not? Uh, the oh, there is another one? Uh, yeah. When a forward enters... Uh, when a forward enters your... Uh, when a forward enters your field, you may remove Lugay from the game. If you do so, that forward gets 2k power and brave. This effect does not end the end of the turn. Uh, I'm just going to be right back. You guys can talk about this. I, I actually like this. Yo... Barnabas so, doesn't have to rely on a 5k to remain active? Best card. Yeah, they... The only problem is Lugai, like the other Lugai actually searches for your Barnabas, so, you know. Yeah, that's but the at the same time, I... Like, this card, it does some very funky effects. Like, giving something 2k and Brave permanently at the cost of exiling a backup, it's a very nice effect, and you could probably do something really sweet with it. Oh yeah, totally. But like, how much of a deck building cost are you willing to put into your deck to have this at all? My problem is this doesn't feel like an ice card. Like it, why it is feels, this? It feels like an earth card. Yeah, or it feels a lightning like an earth card. Because why is this ice backup removing itself to permanently give a forward two K brave? Like, it feels like, yeah, it, should, it probably feels like it could have been in a different color, but I guess they only put it in ice because it's Lugay. Yeah, I mean, it, it's at the same time, you know, running Barnabas beside it, it's kind of entertaining, because now you've got a one-cost 9k forever. Yeah, pretty much. It's kind of entertaining, but that means that you're not taking advantage of Lugay's effect, which oh. means Lugay is now just an expensive evoker. Yeah, it's an evoker with a relevant name. But that being said, evokers with relevant names can be playable. Just look at Squall from the last set. Yeah. But, but at least, I guess, yeah. Uh, like, like, it's like, what's the choice? It's like you play a 1 cost 9k or you play a 5 cost 10k that's dull freezing two things to attack. Like, yeah. <sighs> like, I'd probably prefer to have the 5 cost 10k, especially considering that I've got cards that can search for squalls. I don't have any cards that search for Lugai. Yeah. You, you know, know. It's it's weird. The card kind of makes me sad. Oh yeah, certainly. Wait, this also, one? Also, Dr. Yeah. Sid, true. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Garland. It doesn't work with Garland, thankfully. Oh. Because, yeah, it's removed, not being broken. Yeah, it removes yeah. itself from the game, yeah. not breaking. But still, I, you know... There is there is a Magical Christmas Land scenario with this card, but it involves you writing three elements that do not work well together. Yeah, okay. I, I still like the fact that you can just sack a two-cost early backup to attach it, essentially attach it to something to give it the pump forever. But, yeah, I don't know. I guess it depends on the deck you want to put it in. Like, the fact that it's a two-cost backup is why I'm like, I would definitely rate this. Yeah, like, you can rate yeah. it as a two-cost backup, but... As, as you were just mentioning, at what point is this just an expensive evoker that happens to have a really sweet effect attached to it? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't count this as an evoker, because you can do it any time. Like, you can pay for something using it, because it doesn't say it has to be active to sack it. So you can pay for something using it to attach it. I would not I would not put this at the level of an evoker. This could be used on anything. And oh, I, I I agree with that. It's but what we were sort of discussing just before was you compare this to Squall from the previous set. Like it's another card which doesn't have great text but a relevant name. Yeah, that is yeah, yeah. Definitely. Because, yeah, you could play this with the uh the Barnabas from Opus Five. And now you've got a one cost nine k that doesn't actually become dull because you do have a card named Lugai, which is a backup and it's hard to get rid of. Yeah. But at the same time, you're sort of sitting there going, "Now you do have the expensive evoker." 
Because yeah. I definitely like the idea of this popping off on something something cheap and small that you've played for an ETB or for a search effect, then popping this to attach it, making your your tutor that's meant to be expendable relevant. And getting a couple of good damage in. Hell, if if other haste stuff could work in dual colour, I would love to do this card with some haste work. So let's think about the cards that you would actually want to get the boost for in the first place. Which cards would you want to give the boost to? Uh, my weakest card in the cycle, in, in my list. But yeah, that's, but that's the thing. Like, what card would that be? And what scenario would that then, that card then be the weakest card? Like, the only card that I can really think of that would benefit most from this would be, like, the Riku in Storm List or the Ash in Storm List. What about, the multi -atta what about the multi-attack cards? The multi-attack cards. Yeah, like the lightning one. Game. Well, that one can't gain brave, so it's possible. Oh, it can't. Brave. Oh, okay. That, that ignore. That's, that's part of the yeah. That's part of the magical Christmas land scenario where, with the entering effect of Lugai on the stack, you actually Kuchel in the Ravana, and then you exile the Lugai. Because I was also so thinking the two K and brave, and it keeps the brave. Yeah, because I was also thinking with um with the uh, what's it called Estinian or. But with Estinian, you lose the backup, which means you lose the haste. You lose the haste, so it's yeah. not not that relevant. Alright, that's the end of the ice cycle, and we're moving on to the wind.